Uh, what changed from the first half to the second half? You guys had a lead in the halftime. Was it something Texas did on their end, or was it just kind of fatigue that settled in with you guys being shorthanded? Uh, I think it was the details that, that really settled in. Uh, first half, we came in with that juice, with the energy. Um, we were locked in, you know, being on defense in our gap. We had a lot of energy, and it flowed our way. In the second half, we made some, some mental mistakes. Um, could be from fatigue, which is something that we did learn. Fatigue can, can mess with your mentality overall. Uh, we just got to be better. I mean, we had a great first half. We had 20 more minutes to finish the game. But we didn't. Um, we got we to gotta work on that and be better next time. And then what was Shane Southwell's coach to you as head coach uh, being shorthanded for this game? I mean, it was great having him uh, step in. Um, he did great. Uh, he, he was being a great leader for us. Um, with him being younger, I mean, he was able to, you know, give us terminologies that, we, you know, we understood a lot um, just because he's younger with us. Um, but it, it, it was fun going out there. You know, everybody doubted us from the beginning. We had a lot of fun out there. Everybody was shocked. Where's Coach Webb? Where, where's the rest of the guys? They have like six people. Out, like, it, it was just fun being able to go out there and actually play because um, we actually worried if we were going to be able to play or not. And it was just a blessing to be able to go out there and play today. Thanks, Nigel. Thank you. Uh, next question to Rob Collins. Hey, Nigel, uh, when did y'all find out that you're going to be shorthanded? And after you found out, was it kind of like a circle the wagon moment? It's us against everybody? Uh, we found out yesterday uh, afternoon. I mean, everybody had to go and, you know, get COVID tested. We found out who was, if we had enough or not, found out late. We had a late practice last night and a late film session. Um, but we, we all were excited to be able to go into the game. I mean, we, we, we would be more disappointed if we didn't get to play than we got to play today. So all the guys that came today showed up today were ready. Um, Carlton Lingard showed up, played big for us. I mean, really his first true game. And we couldn't be any more happy for, for him um, and for, for the rest of the team. So it was just a blessing to be able to play today. Uh, next question to Tim Iverson. Hey, Nigel, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome, man. Hey, so you you had a real strong start. You had 15 in, in the first half, and then in, in the second half, uh, it took a little while for, for you to score. Was there something that Texas was doing to you specifically that kind of slowed you down, or was it just shots not going in early in that second half? I mean, I knew as being a, a mentally smart basketball player, I knew Texas was going to come out and change their defense on me. Um, they That's what they did. I mean, they tried to deny the catches. But really, I knew the difference maker of that game would be if my teammates could get going or not. Um, we needed some some guys to really step up and make some big shots. And that's what softens the defense up a little bit. I mean, if I tried to, to attack it every time, all the defense was geared towards me at that moment. I was trying to really um, trying to settle in. Hopefully, my teammates could you know, make some bu tough buggies. I mean, they went on a good run. Um, fatigue set in for us. Um, but I just learned I got to be better. I got to be more aggressive and then you know, be able to get them in some open shots as well. So. Is, is there some some pride I mean I know, obviously you don't want to take any moral victories or whatever but I mean they're they're ranked in the top 15 with the you know adversity that you guys had coming in is there some pride with with, with the fight that you guys had tonight I mean we, we all believe that we're a great team I could see the doubt you know in everybody's faces when we ran out the tunnel with seven eight guys um Nobody really kind of believed it, but we believed in ourselves. I mean, we came out, we played hard. The, the crowd was into it after they seen that, hey, these guys are going to fight today. Um, and that's just got to be, be our thing for the rest of the year. We got to put together 40 minutes. And I know we keep saying that over and over, hey, we got to put together a full game. But um, it's harder it's harder said than done. Um, but we're, we're going to keep working. Uh, we got a tough one in, in Morgantown this weekend. Um, who knows who's going to be back? We don't know yet, but we're still going to go in with that fight. Um, we're going to, whoever joins us then, they're going to bring the energy too. It's going to be a good game in Morgantown for us. Uh, next question to Dylan Sherwood. Yeah, not Nigel. What was big for you in that first half, uh, most, uh, to get you guys off to that great start that you guys needed because you guys have been struggling with, uh, with the slow starts. <laughs> Um, I mean, we had a lot of energy coming out. It wasn't that false energy. Uh, we came out with, you know, saying, playing defense. Um, we rebounded them, limited one shot, and made them take tough ones. I mean, we got out and played. I mean, that's I and mean, we had a lot of energy off the rip. I mean, fresh fresh legs, everything. And then on offense, the ball didn't stick. We, we drove, created kick for each other. We had great spacing today, which was, it was really hard for them to guard, especially when they switched 
um, ball screens and we are able to drive and create for others and then be able to make shots as well. For you as a sophomore, how big was it for you to step up with, with, the, with the key guys that you had out? And that's two starters as well. I mean, it's always big. I mean, coaches is always telling me and told all of us that we, we had to step up today. We're missing some pieces, but we got to fix We still got to finish the puzzle. Um, it was just great. I was happened to be that guy. Mark Smith was the guy um, in Oklahoma. I mean, he put up a great game and I just happened to be the guy tonight. Who knows who's going to be the guy in Morgantown, but we need somebody to be that guy. We need multiple people to be that guy for us to be victorious uh, in Morgantown. And what was it like for uh, Shane Southwell to guide you guys tonight, uh, you know, stepping up for Coach Weber? Uh, it was great. I mean, Shane, Shane and Henry, Coach Henderson, we had a lot of fun with them. I mean, outside our normal practices, we had a lot of fun yesterday. Um, we laughed. We joked around. We, we got after it. We, we talked um, pregame. We, we played music. We jumped around. We got hype. I mean, it was just we had a lot of fun. And that's what we got to got to be. That's got to be our mentality. Everything can't be so serious. When we have fun, we play well. When we're so serious and we, we're tight and we're not trying to make mistakes, that's when things just don't go right. Okay, next question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Nigel. Um, what was the difference between coming into the Sooner game where you struggled, then you came out in the second half, to this game where you really showed up in the first half? I mean, I, I've been told and I, I've learned throughout the time that people scout as well. I mean, they're, the guys are going to come out. They're going to know, hey, he can do this, he can do that. This, is, this isn't my freshman year anymore where I can sneak up on teams and, you know, be able to do the things that I do. Um, I've been trying to be, you know, saying I'm, I'm trying to, you know, outside my game from just uh, scoring. I mean, I've seen that in the first half. Scoring was a big thing for me, but but like I said, I needed to be able to be able to get some assists in that second half and get my teammates going where we can have that 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 multiple threat. Um, one guy trying to kill the whole team and take the whole team by itself is going to be hard to do. When we had the whole team scoring like we did in the first half, we were really dominant, and that's something that I've seen. In the second half, I knew they were going to change their defense around because, I mean, I watched the West Virginia game, the full game, and how they did Sean McNerman, I think that's his name, something like that. They they isolated him, you know, trapped him, kept him from getting the ball. I knew they were going to eventually do that. So trying to get my teammates involved, I mean, they would have to soften that up and help, you know, and all that stuff. You talked just a little bit about it, but, you know, when Bruce gets back, you're going to have him jumping around listening to music before games now? I mean, <laughs> we might. Coach, we know Coach Will. I mean, we got to get those victories, though. When we get those victories, Coach Weber will do, do anything. I mean, I've seen him last year. We got some great victories on the road and at home, and Coach Weber was hype jumping around, dancing with us as well. But nobody wants to dance to losses. I mean, it's just a fact. Um, we got to be better. Um, even Mike McGurl talked to us in the locker room. He told us, um, and I'm going to leave it with this. Uh, two years ago, 2019, he told me they started off the conference 0-2. And, and going into West Virginia, they were down 21 and a half. And then they changed the season around and they went on a run from then. That's kind of what it's looking right right now, but we got to believe it in our hearts. We got to believe it in our minds and we have to go to God and play. Appreciate it, Nigel. Good game. Thank you. Any other questions for Nigel before we let him go? Okay, that's a good place to stop. Thank you, Nigel.